Hey, this is Stephen Platinum, your friend in wrestling with Platinum against AEW Dark. This is from last Tuesday, um, December 14th, 2021. We had 12 matches and a rather lengthy show um, and a really weak AEW Dark elevation this week. So I would expect that this Dark will probably have more competitive matches and more angles being built and all of that stuff that you kind of used to expect from Elevation. I find that a very interesting thing. I'm going to look at the numbers next time that the two of them have been drawing to see if it's made a difference in that regard, the weakening of Elevation and the strengthening of Dark. We open with our first match, Chris Statlander, the Orange Cassidy at ringside against Marina Shafir, who is making her debut with AEW, and has a nice, lengthy, shockingly lengthy match with Chris Statlander. Um, Statlander wins with a submission hold, so they've, they've very quietly, or not so quietly, given all the women um, of note a submission hold and an impact-style finisher. I find that really interesting. Three check marks. How do we grade these Matchups that are foregone conclusions or enhancement matches or jobber matches, if you want to be an ass. Uh, one check mark for somebody being put over definitively. Two, if they look good in the process. And three, if the defeated person gets a lot of offense and or looks really good in the process. Um, in this case, both of those things happen. So three check marks. Second match, Nick Comoroto against the debuting Dean Fleming. Uh, Komoroto destroys him, throws him around, clotheslines the crap out of him, and then a water wheel drop picks up the victory. Three check marks. Uh, let's move on. It's not really a match of note. Now we have a competitive match. See what I'm saying about AEW Dark? Riho and Ryo Mizunami against Emi Sakura. And uh, the debuting Mei Suruga is going to wrestle. So that's part of the attraction of this match. When Suruga gets in there, um, just starts stomping away, knocks Miyazami off the... Like, you know, Mei Segura has... Um, they they get some heelish double teams in and that kind of thing. At the end of the day, Riho gets that running Meteora on Suruga as Mizunami clotheslines the living crap out of her. So that is a pinfall and a win for Riho and Ryo Mizunami. Um, do both sides look good in the competitive matchup? Yes, that's a check mark. Does one team get put over definitively? That most definitely happened. And is something advanced? Yeah, I think we're going to see more of this rivalry on AEW Dark in particular. So three check marks and we're moving on. Fourth match, Jade Cargill picks up another win on Valentino Rossi, who has made, I think, her fifth or sixth appearance for AEW and does a good job. But when you're in there with Jade Cargill, you don't really have to. You just get kind of moshed. And that definitely happens here. Cargill wins with the Jaded. Three check marks. That's win number 21 for Jade Cargill. Fifth match, Angelico against Invictus Kosh. We haven't seen Invictus in a while, so I think this is the second or third appearance. Um, they have a decent back and forth in the beginning. Angelico um, does look good here. And then eventually, um, Angelico makes a cash tap out to the Navarro Death Roll. It's good to see him back. Um, good to see him wrestling that unusual submission style that he does um, and definitely gives Cash a lot of offense here. So we're going to give this three check marks and we're moving on. Um, we still haven't had a second competitive match, but we get to see Tay Conti, which is awesome. Uh, Brody Lee Jr. and Anna Jay and against Heather Monroe, who I like a great deal. And Heather Monroe getting a lot of looks here. Um, this would be the third appearance of what I would imagine would be quite a few more to come. Tay Conti, typical match when she's got this kind of jobber match in front of her. She gives a little offense, but at the end of the day looks very definitive. The judo throws look great. The strikes look great. The pump kicks look great. Hammerlock DDT always looks good. Three check marks here. Seventh match, Lee Johnson and Brock Anderson with Arn at ringside against Fabu Andre, one of my favorites, who I just saw wrestle on the Mayhem on Mills show and did a great job. And Tony Donati, who's been here quite a few times. Both of these guys, I think, are making like around their seventh appearance. Um, but this is about Lee Johnson and Brock Anderson looking good. They're giving Brock Anderson a little more every time to do. Um, but Lee Johnson is a seasoned pro by AW standards anyway. Um, does a good job making sure Anderson looks good in the process. And he wins with the Gord Buster. So three check marks and we're moving on. Chuck Taylor with Wheeler Utah at ringside versus Ryan Nemeth with the wingman at ringside. You know what? I'm going to call this competitive. 
Um, and it is. It's a back and forth match. Chuck Taylor, by the way, how many matches has that guy had in total? 77. Shocked? Shouldn't be. Uh, Chuck Taylor does win, um, by the way. Uh, but he wins with an inside cradle, which tells you that this was a competitive match. Did both sides look good? Yes. Um, did Chuck Taylor win? Yes. Um, is something advanced? Absolutely, because the wingmen are ganging up on Taylor in Utah, and Orange Cassidy storms the ring to make the save. So look for more out of all of these, both the wingmen and the best friends. Three check marks. Ninth match, Sean Spears against the debuting Josh Woods. Sean Spears always lets you get some stuff in, but he's going to whip your ass, and he does, and he wins with the C4 definitively. Three check marks. Nyla Rose against Zita Zhang, who we haven't seen in a while, uh, making the third appearance. And Nyla Rose, of course, has been there forever in a day and wins with that beast bomb and is really savage in the process, and we're looking forward to that matchup uh, in the uh, TBS Women's Tournament. Three check marks. Eleventh match. Two people who have yet to pick up a win. So that's the very definition of somebody's got to win. So we're going to call this a competitive matchup. Tony Vincita against Arjun Singh. Um, it is a back and forth match. A lot of suplexes, a lot of throws, which I really like. Some Vindic Vincita goes for a military press slam. Uh, you know, they're basically having a solid wrestling match. And at the end, um, Singh connects with this kind of like, I guess you would just call it a tornado knee. Um, and it looked really cool. And Arjun Singh picks up the first win. Did both sides look good? Yep. Um, did Arjun Singh win definitively? Yep. Is something advanced? Yes. Arjun Singh, maybe he's going to pick up some wins here from here on in. And then finally, in our last match, uh, the Dark Order, in this case, an incarnation of Evil Uno, Colt Cabana, and Alex Reynolds, who as a six-person team are 0-1. But I think that's going to change. Maybe or maybe not. Like we said, we knew this was going to, there's some form of this match was going to happen again. We got 2.0 and Daniel Garcia. It's a great back and forth match. Uh, finally, a match that's actually kind of fun to watch and feels back and forth. Um, at the end of the day, though, uh, 2.0 connects with two for the show to pick up the victory. Uh, did both sides look good? Yes. Did uh, 2.0 and Daniel Garcia pick up a definitive victory? Absolutely. And uh, is something advanced? Yeah, I think we're going to see 2.0 and Daniel Garcia against other incarnations of the Dark Order in the future. And that was AEW Dark. It, was it better than AEW Dark Elevation? Most definitively. Um, however, man, it's so much longer.